in the end, now after we approach this, we're going to need to get two. Right. And that is to say, if I see on a test question, you do the work, and the work is wrong, and by some coincidence, you happen to get two, it's still wrong. Okay, The work needs to match. And by the same token, if you get the wrong answer, but your mistake was just like you copied it down wrong, or you made a simple mistake like, uh, it should be like, I don't know, four times five and you got nine, like it's a small mistake, so you're not going to much credit, like the rest of the work is correct, you got the wrong answer, but all that work, all the logic was pretty sound, okay? It all needs to match up. And so I'm not gonna say that all that matters is that you get Z is two, it matters how you get to, okay? And by how, I don't mean that you do exactly the same steps in exactly the same order as I do, but just that every step that you make is logical and not the result of guessing and checking or just seeing algebra, okay? So we do whatever we want as long as it doesn't violate any, anything about mathematics that we've learned. So what is something that can be done? So first somebody makes something that they think would be like a common mistake that you cannot do. So a common mistake that you cannot do right now. Uh, take three plus four. I like it. That's exactly what I was thinking. Three plus four, right? And get seven. You can't do that, right? This four belongs to the multiplication of this parentheses, right? Multiplication before addition. Okay, so let's do something right. Subtract three from each side. Absolutely. You can always subtract anything you want from either side, even if it makes no sense. I wouldn't do it. But absolutely, that, that minus three, that three is like over there by itself. You can subtract three from it. Okay? You don't have to worry about that four. That four belongs to this. So four times z plus five equals twenty-eight. Twenty that's a two. Twenty-eight. Okay? Did I do that right? Yes? Take, take four times z and four times five. Sure can, you can distribute the four. Okay. <coughs> so you could subtract 20. Okay. How about somebody at this one, just because I see common mistakes like this, what's something that someone might try to do, could do it, but they usually do it. Seth, out of four Z plus 20. Okay, four Z plus 20 with 24 Z. Or subtract four from both sides. Subtract four. Get, you get the right idea. You want to cancel out that four. First of all, I, mean, I would deal with this. This is what I would do. Is subtracting four what you should do to cancel out that four? No. The opposite of multiplication is division, so we would divide that four. So that's a very good point. Also, what if we try to divide by four? Can we divide both sides by four? Yeah. Absolutely. You can do anything you want to both sides. Here's the mistake. Somebody spot the mistake for me. Ryan? It could be Z plus five. Right. If I'm going to divide this, listen to what I'm saying. Both sides by the same thing. I would have to divide this and this by the same thing. Right? You have to divide them both by four. So it would be Z plus five if we did that. So let's just back up. Okay. Just be careful. Don't, don't subtract four to cancel that out. If you do divide by four, at this step, which I wouldn't do because it just kind of complicates things, make sure you do it correctly. In this case, it actually works out kind of nice, but if this isn't divisible by four, or this isn't divisible by four, then you're making the rest of the equation solving and difficult. All right, so what would we do first if we were just like mainstream equation Minus solvers? Four Good, four z equals eight. Good, divide by four, don't subtract four. Divide by four. I'm going to do the opposite of whatever it is you're trying to get away from z. Multiply by 4, divide by 4. z plus 4, subtract 4. I want to go back here. I want to solve it a, a different way, too, but I also want to remind you of the, uh, of the scales. So if we had an equation 4z plus 20 equals 28, then we would have, we need, uh, so we 
got four C. I'll try to make this easy to break up. Okay. Plus twenty. That's, that's 20, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me, that was weird. Uh, and on the other side, we have 28. Okay, I'm just going to copy this so that it's easy. All right, we got 28. I agree with that one. Poor Trent, I don't know what kind of emergency he has, but before that emergency takes hold. Yeah. So, yes, I would absolutely, I think it is even more clear that the thing that just seems more natural would be to take coins off of this side and off of this side. Subtract 20 on both sides. Exactly what we did. If we do the divide by 4 idea, we could do that, right? We could divide this by 4. But the mistake would be to say, oh, I'll just divide this by 4, right? And each group is 1. So 4x divided by, or 4z divided by 4 is z. And then to continue with this 20. If we divide this side by four, we need to break it, this everything on the side into four groups, right? So that would look like, okay, well, clearly there's, there's four Z's, so there's gonna be one Z in each of these groups, okay? And I can see like these split into four groups nicely, so this is going to, well, that's what's gonna be in every group, right? Every of the four groups. Every group has one bag and five coins. So that's C plus five on this side. And on the other side, we split this into four. Um, yes. Let's see. Let's try to make it so that we can. All right, so now they're stacked in such a way that it's clear to see that it can be divided into groups of four. Here's a group, here's a group, here's a group, and there's a group. And in every group, there's how much? Eight, eight, seven. Seven. I'm to show you is if you divide by four on both sides, make sure you divide everything on this side by four. It's pretty clear when you see a picture of it. Maybe a little hard to remember. But it's, it's really not about remembering. It's about this is a bunch of stuff, and everything here needs to get divided by four. Here's something that needs to be divided by four. Here's something to be divided by four. Anything else that we're adding or subtracting on that side needs to get divided by four. Okay. Uh, are there other ways to solve this equation? Do we have to subtract three first? Don't have. The only to. thing? No? What could you do before that? Distribute the four. That's different. That's a different first step. We do that first. Uh, what about if we did subtract three? Could we do something besides distribute the four? Besides distributing the four, is there something else we could do? Two words explain why you can't subtract five. Tyler? Because everything inside the parentheses are getting multiplied. Everything inside the parentheses is getting multiplied by four, right? Uh, <laughs> working with me. Who am I missing? Is that a little bit? Kind of? Okay. You don't know? 
Yeah. Well, you changed these. I said distribute four. Okay. I had to use pink ones because I was running out of these. No, I mean like the, no colors. Oh yeah, I had to put them on my printer, which is not a color printer. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> <laughs> Still colorful, my man. Well, I should be doing a better job. Caitlin. Everything inside the parentheses has been multiplied by four. Is this actually the number five? No. No. No, really, like how much is it worth? It's actually worth twenty. Right? So I can't subtract five and expect it to make this gone. If if you have trouble understanding that exactly, don't Try to take things out, out of parentheses that you haven't dealt with yet. You haven't done anything with that parentheses. Parentheses are supposed to be multiplied by four. If you want to start subtracting things, at least distribute whatever is supposed to be distributed. Okay. Or do, do whatever is happening to the parentheses. Is there something else I could do besides distribute the four, though? Think about this, if I had 4x equals uh, 16, would I divide by 4? Yeah. Now why does that work? Because we go into each other, 4 goes into 4. 4 goes into 4, 4 divides 4, right? Leaving just the x. Because this has a factor of 4, and this has a factor of 4. That's true here too. How do we multiply fractions? Ooh. Oh, sharing decimals. Straight across. Oh, straight across. Oh. Straight across. Okay, so let me show you how I could rewrite this side so you can be fully convinced oh. that the fours cancel each other out. Four over four times z plus five over one, right? Four times z plus five, you would have to like multiply by the whole thing. Over four times one. What's four divided by four? Four times one. No. One, right? Now it's just z plus five. So we could, we could divide that by four. Anthony? When you're multiplying fractions too, don't you have to find a common denominator? You do yeah. not. That's dividing. That's dividing then? Yeah. Nope. Oh, it's adding. I thought you added. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. No, but is it? If it's like if it's like three over four, and then two, two plus five, I mean z plus five. Sorry. And then like you know yeah. Then you would turn that into decimal, right? No. No, 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 it'd be five over one, right? Well, you you treat it like five over one, yeah. yeah. I, I thought you would distribute the decimal of three over four, which is seventy five to all the oh. that's what Mr. Hobbs told me. <laughs> this might be uh, easier. Yes. The problem is what if the fraction is not three fourths, it's one ninth. What's the decimal for one ninth? Four yeah. calculators. Um, oh, let me get it first. One nine ten. What? Good luck with that. This one twenty. Uh, oh, yeah, he just... says he's trying to do it mentally. Oh, mentally. It's, one. Yeah. One. it's point one, 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 one. How many ones? Infinite. Infinite, Infinite number of ones. Can you just change this to decimal and then multiply? You can't put in an infinite number of ones in your calculator and then multiply it by, say, five. Or, or yeah. you just do like one repeating. How do you tell your calculator one repeating? How do you put a line over the one in your calculator? You draw it you and you it out. Oh, yeah, they hit like it comes in. Uh, yeah. I don't think it would surprise you that I feel like we have an over-dependence on decimals, and we're very anxious about fractions and for no reason. Okay. If we add and subtract, we find a common denominator. Because if I try to add 3 fourths plus 5 sevenths, remember at the very beginning of the year, this is how we started out? Yeah. If I try to add 3 fourths and 5 sevenths, What's the four? What, what do the denominators mean? What does the four mean here? It's the whole, like what we have, like all together. Well, what you want? Okay. 
Let's see, how am I gonna say this? You wanna have four eggs, but you only have three right now, so you gotta. I'm just, I'm just trying to like, use an example. Apples and oranges. Okay, the analogy of apples and oranges. We're comparing two different things, we're trying to add them together. We're trying to add three apples and five oranges. What does the number four mean? What does the number seven mean? Um, four and seven are like the whole of something. Which you want to get to? They're like the whole object. And then uh, how many like parts they split into? How many parts the whole is split into? Yeah. How many parts the whole is split into? Yes. The whole in this case is split into four. So this is really uh, kind of um, the size, the size of the pieces, right? This is of the size four makes a whole. This is of the size. Seven makes the whole. Is that the same size? Mm. Which piece? Which which piece of the whole is bigger? The four. The four. It takes fewer of these, and so if I look at how big those pieces are, they're bigger than if I split it into seven. Split it into seven. These pieces are smaller than those pieces. To add three of these to five of these, and say that I have eight. <laughs> Now I don't even know what to say. Eight what? Eight pieces, but eight different sized pieces. Right? That's why we need to make them the same by finding a common denominator. Seth, Are we, have you done twenty yet? I've only done the first one yet. Do you have to go back to your list twelve or something? Yeah, I have twenty on my list. 20. Twenty is on the list for both sections. All right. Uh, here we go. So Z was two. However, you decided to do that. As long as every step was mathematically correct, that's all that matters. Three halves times x minus five equals negative six. And go. What do we do first? Yes? Wait. We wait. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> How long do we wait? Oh. You stop. Yeah, so you stop, drop, and roll. Can you divide? Oh, can you? We can do anything you say. Let's just see what we happens when you say it. Okay, divide by 3 over 2. Now listen. I could write absolutely anything I wanted. We just have to make sure we do it correctly. Let's see what happens when we do this. It looks a lot like when you divide it by four, it's like a question, right? Yeah. yeah. You got three halves over three halves, right? Like I'm splitting them into two different fractions here. Times x minus five over one. Is this the same as this? Yeah. Multiply yeah. straight across. Yeah. Yeah. Three halves times x minus five. Three halves times one. That's it makes this fraction. So this must be the same. And what's three halves divided by three halves? Yeah. One times x minus five. It's just x minus five. Looks like a good idea. Over here, we want to do negative 6 divided by 3 halves. So we do negative 6 over 1 times 2 over 3. Two over three. 3 cancels with negative 6, leaving negative 2. Get negative 4. Close Half time. times both sides. 1. X is 1. Oh. Good job, y'all. That's what we could do. OK, so just like to ruin my method, what I was saying, like, you know about like three divided by two. So I did that. I got one point five when I did that. Uh -huh. I got one point five as my answer. So well, three halves is one point five. So it's one point five minus seven point five equals negative six. And then when oh, I was, you yeah. distributed. Yeah, I distributed the decimal. It doesn't work because I got one point five. No way. I wouldn't say distributing the decimal doesn't work. Maybe you must have made some other mistake. You can distribute from one and a half, 1.5. Because three, 3 over 2 is the equivalent to 1.5. If I distribute that, it still works. But that's what I was talking about on that problem a couple problems ago. Oh, with the yeah, 12. Yeah, 12. What about it? It's to distribute decimal. And I said that that's not wrong. Oh, I said it was wrong. No. <laughs> OK. You, I said, so here's, here's what happened. I'll read it back to you. I said, how do we multiply fractions? And you said, turn them into decimal. That's not how we multiply fractions. How you multiply fractions is straight across. That was the answer to my question. 
Okay. You said turn it into decimals. When I said no, I didn't mean no, that you can't do that. But it's not how you multiply fractions. Okay. Multiply fractions straight across. Um, if we distribute the 3 halves, we have 3 halves x minus 15 halves equals negative 6, because we're distributing the 3 halves to the x and to the negative 5. And then you have 3 halves x equals negative 6 plus 15 halves. Right, add 15 halves to both sides. And then 3 halves x equals, I need to add a common denominator here. How many halves is this? It's negative 6 over 1, so it's negative 12 over 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So we have uh, 3 halves. How do we get rid of this 3 halves? Divide by 3 halves. Divide by 3 halves. Or multiply by 2 thirds. Divide by a fraction, multiply by the reciprocal. And then don't they cancel each other out? These do. And these also happen too. And we get x equals 1. Either you think 3's cancel, 2's cancel, or you get 6 over 6. It's all the same. 6 over 6 is 1. Canceling and canceling, canceling is 1. <coughs> So that's uh, 20, and now 24. Could you add 28 too? Yeah. Oh, to add to the problems to do? Yeah. No. Did I assign it? Uh, I don't think so. Do you want me to do what I didn't assign? Wait, no, 28. Wait, you mean for 3.4? Yeah. yeah, for 3.4. Oh, well, that's different. Still on 3.2, or 3.3, I mean. Oh, okay. Uh, what was I saying, 24? Yeah. Divide 2 over 5 on both sides? Yeah. Divide 2 over 5 on both sides. Divide 2 over 5 on both sides. So I'll take negative 14 over 1 times 5 over 2, right? Reciprocal. This is just going to cancel the 2 fifths, 9 minus 2. Uh, 2 cancels this guy. We get negative 7 times 5, negative 35, equals 9 minus 2b. Subtract 9 on both sides, negative 44 negative 2b, so b equals 22, divided by negative 2 on both sides, Anthony? So the negative 14 gives you times that by 5, and you get 70, and then divide by 2? Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Okay. And again, there's, there's different ways that we can go about it. If I were doing this problem, that's exactly what I would do, only I would be thinking multiply by the reciprocal, so that's the exact same thing, right? I wouldn't write down the divide by part. I would just go right to multiplying by the reciprocal. All right. On we go to number. Oh, we're on a 3.4 now. So 3.4 number 20. Let's talk about the word solution. So here, the solution is 22. How do we know that that's the solution? What does that mean? Is it to solve the problem? It's its final product. To be equals. I'm going to be absolutely sure that that is right, Tyler. Because you can plug in 22 to be. I can go all the way back and plug it back in. That's the ultimate challenge, right? The ultimate test of whether you found the right solution. That's it, right? It, you plug it back in and it makes the equation true. The word is true. This is a statement saying, this is the same as this. Okay. It's true, the scale is balanced. If we put something in for B that makes it unbalanced, um, it's not true and it's not the solution. So it's all about plugging the value back in makes the equation true, right? So value for uh, 
B or X or whatever that makes the equation So what are we looking for? A value for z that what? Makes the equation true. Makes the equation true. All right, so let's go about solving this. How would you solve this? Would you distribute 4? OK, distribute 4. 8z plus 1. Now what would you do? Subtract 1 from each side. OK, subtract 1, subtract 1. 8z minus 1 equals 8z. Now what would you do? Divide by 8z. Oh, no. Subtract 8z. Yeah. Subtract 8z. Subtract 8z. What's 8z minus 8z? Zero. 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 Okay, so negative 4 is over here. All right, so what's 8z uh, minus 8z? Zero. Zero. So negative 4 is equal Anthony? Oh, uh, never mind. Well, like, I was confused when I figured it out. What'd you figure out? Like, I was confused from when you went from 8z equals 8z plus 4. And then went down to AZ is uh, minus 4 equals AZ. Oh. And then I figured it out. So they subtracted 4. Yeah. Like, like all the Z's got canceled out. Here, let's, let's look at it on a scale. Here, let's, let's make it easy and, and recreate when we distribute it. So you have 8z. 1, 2, 3, 4. We'll double that. That's 8z on this side. And just double both sides and 8 on the other side, too. Okay, we got 8z on the other side. Plus 4. Okay. What do you make of that? Something. Something that's funny. Because think about how the scale is balanced. All right, this guy balances this guy. Mm -hmm. This one with that one. This one with that one. Like every bag over here has a bag over here balancing it. But this side also has four coins. Four more coins. So you got four clowns. What would you expect if you put if you had sixteen bags with four. equal amounts in them? You put eight over here and eight over here. Would it be balanced? Yes. Then yeah. you put four coins over here. Unbalanced. Would be like this. Yeah. yeah. Maybe like coins that are really light. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the so How light would they, could they be? Yeah, I mean, they all out. all of the bags have to be the exact same weight. Wouldn't they be negatives or no? They'd What's that? Be zero. Wouldn't they be so negatives? They would have to be zero, so that would make it or so Can one could be some of the bags be empty when you added the four coins? Like no, all of the ba if one bag is empty, all the bags are empty because all the bags are identical. Yeah, Frank. Tyler? Those coins be like neutral, like they don't weigh anything. These coins? Yeah. No, coins are coins. Coins weigh something. Coins are definitely pushing down with the weight of one coin. How much is the weight of one coin? It doesn't matter. All that matters is that it's balanced. Okay, so it's unbalanced with the coins. It's unbalanced. Can this, could this be real? No. Well, it could be real, but it's not going to work like that. It's not going to be even. Well, that's what I mean. By real, I mean we have eight of bags over here, eight bags over here, and four coins on the side, and it's balanced. Is that no. a reality? No. It is not at all possible. No. It's impossible. Negative. Is there anything you can put in each of these bags that would make it possible? Four coins. Four coins? Yeah. Okay, four coins in there. But then that oh, would mean the other side has four coins. One coin in four bags. No, I mean, but every bag has to have the same. Oh. Right? That's, yeah. that's kind of the definition of It's bad. impossible. No solution. Yeah. It's impossible. Final answer is long. Ooh. Look, you're trying to say that, let's just think of it, of it numerically. Eight times some number, plug any number you want in there, just get eight times that number, is equal to, which is what I just said, the exact same thing, eight times some number. Yeah. Plus four. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. 
so these are the same, these two right here, they're the exact same number. Whatever you plug in for z, this will be the same. This part's will be the same. So if you plug in 4, 8 times 4 is 32. 8 times 4 is 32, so is 32 equal to 36? No. No. And is there anything you can plug in for z that would ever make that work out? No. 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 You can see it's just impossible because the, the x's or the, the variables are, are balancing each other out already, and then we put coins in there. Ah. So, no solution. Good job, guys. Remember, solution is a value for z that makes the equation true. Can this equation ever be true? No. Negative. No. Well, no. this equation is the same as this one, so this equation can never be true. Negative. There's nothing you can plug in for z that makes it work. So there's no solution. Next was 26. This is kind of the opposite of what we just looked at. All right, what would we choose to do first? Distribute the two. Six G plus four. Should we do one half? Might as well while we're at it. Six G plus four. Now what? What's that? It is already even. Yeah. Plug it down. What if I plug in 1 for G? Does that work? Yeah. Yeah, you get 6 plus 4 equals 6 plus 4. I'm going to put in 2 for G. Yeah. 12 plus 4 equals 12 plus 4. It'll work. Now, we're going to have the opposite issue. In this, in this scenario, there is nothing you could plug in for, for G. There's nothing that, or for Z, there's nothing you could put in this in each of these bags that would make this possible. In this case, there's nothing you can plug in for G that would make it not possible. No matter what you plug in for G, it's always equal. Right? Mm -hmm. Does one work? Yes. Yeah. Two? Yeah. Three? Yeah. Four. Negative five. Yeah. yeah. Negative twelve. Yeah. Anything. Uh -huh. Infinite. Infinite. How many solutions? Infinite. Infinite. Infinite solutions. Trillions and trillions. You guys have just been on the ball today. You're just like making your brain on the eggs. <laughs> on the egg. On the really chicken. <laughs> Anthony? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Interception. <laughs> Interception. Did I ever get you today? Me? Or not? Can I get another no. one? Get some more? Yeah. Huh? Sure. I'll have another one. Oh, I'll have another one. You can tell. You're not being honest. No, I'm kidding. Nope. <laughs> no. Um, okay, let's, let's, let's just nuggets. pretend like we didn't notice that and we just keep trying to solve it. I'll subtract four on both sides. 6G equals 6G. Uh, well, that's pretty clear. It is always equal. Always, always equal. How about if I did this? I'm here at 6G plus 4 equals 6G plus 4, and I subtract 6G on both sides. You know, I try to collect all the like terms together. I get 0 plus 4 equals 0 plus 4. So good. Is this true? Yeah. 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 This really highlights the fact that no matter what I plug in for G, they're going to kind of cancel each other out, and all that's left is plus four. is 4 equal to 4? Yeah. Yes. In this case, <laughs> is negative 4 equal to 0? No. No. Negative. So that shows us no matter what we plug in for z, it's going to cancel each other out. And what's left is not true. Negative 4 is not equal to 0, so there's no solution. Here, no matter what we plug in for g, they will cancel each other out. And all that's left is that 4 is equal to 4, which is true. Okay. So it's what we call an identity. Or how many solutions are there? Infinite. There are an infinite number of solutions. Probably even more than that. One, two, three, four, one half, point seven, six, two, three. Anything you plug in for G will not make this untrue. It will always be true, no matter what you plug in for G. Even decimals. Even decimals. You try it yourself. Like, think of a decimal. Just throw one out there. Three point two four. Three point two four. Six times three point two four and six times three point two four. Are they the exact same number? Yes, they are. 
So it's going to be that number and that number. They're identical. That number plus four and that number plus four. Identical. It's always going to be the same. It's always going to be equal. Right? Yeah. Onward. Number 27. Let's look at every step they do and see where we find the mistake. Okay, so um, so they distribute the three. It looks like three x plus five equals three x plus fifteen. That's what they have written. All right, so let's look at that. Is that right? No. 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 What happened, Anthony? Yeah, uh, it's in the distributive property. Yes, you have to do the, isn't that what they tried oh, to do? Oh, oh, oh. Well, that's what they tried to do, but they did it wrong. How'd they do it wrong? Because 3 oh. times 5 is 15. Ah, you have to distribute it to the 5 and get 15. That's what it should have been. So, now looking at this, what would you say about how many solutions there are? None. None? Or infinite. 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 infinite solutions. Identical solutions. Infinite. 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 I should have. Always infinite. No matter what you plug in for x, it'll always be the same. Even decimals. Even decimals. Even negative numbers, even negative decimals. What about imag imaginary numbers? Yes. Still? Even imaginary numbers. Oh, wait, where would you sign go? You have like an equation, every time you did the equation, the kitten leaps. Oh, that, that's just flipped backwards. It's, it's turned around because oh. of the PSATs. Oh, okay. Because that might have helped somebody on the PSATs. What's the time? don't be a d to the third power x so When you take calculus, I'll tell you. Four years away. That done. picture looks exactly like you. Yeah. Yeah, it actually looks. <laughs> yeah, it looks a lot more trim than I do. Uh, so what do they have next? They have twelve y plus thirty six. <laughs> and and thirty six plus twelve y. All right. Is it is that correct from there to there? Yep. Yeah. Should be the 6, it's 12, 6, 36, 4 times 36, 4 times 3, 12. Come on, that looks good. Next. Uh, 12y. So they subtract 36 from both sides, I think. 12y equals 12y. All right. Then they have 0 equals 0. Could you get from here? It's 0 equals 0? Yeah. It's kind of, it'd be hard. That's it. So how do you get from here to there? Oh, uh, zero minus twelve. Minus twelve y on both sides. Zero equals zero, so they say y equals zero. True. Y doesn't equal zero. That's yeah, that's true. Plug in the solution. So what? You gotta plug in the solution. It'll work. It will. I was looking for that. What do we conclude though when we get something like zero equals zero? Does it say y equals zero? Oh. It equals there's a, there is no solution. There is no. It's nothing. Look back here. We've seen this uh, about uh, three times now. Infinite. Infinite solutions. When you do stuff to both sides of the equation, you wind up with no more variables left and a true statement. Oh. It's true. Then we have an infinite number of solutions. So we're on a scale. So we put we have nothing left. <laughs> Let's look at it on a scale. Yeah, dude. Uh, if it's it's minus it's 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 Um, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of small, so they'll fit. Yeah. So what do we have? 12x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, plus what, 36? Yeah. yeah. So that's a lot of coins. Yeah, that's a lot of coin. I got that much coin. I think I have that. Yeah, I'm trying to be popular. <laughs> that's 12. That's, that's 24. 
All right, so on this side, we have 12y plus 36. What are we, what's on the other side of the equation? You have it written down there? 12, got 12 bags. 21, 36. We have the exact same thing. Yeah. It's infinite solutions. Whoa, okay, that was really cool. Yeah, okay, so whatever you do is going to be the same. Yeah, whatever you plug in the bag, whatever the bag is worth, positive, negative, decimal, real, imaginary, no matter what you put into this bag, these bags right here will cancel out these bags right here. And all that's left is 36 coins and 36 coins. Is 36 equal to 36? They yeah. cancel each other out. Could I subtract coins from both sides? Like, yeah. take those away and take those away? Is that still true? Yeah. yeah. Take equal amounts of bags off of both sides? Is that yeah. still true? Yeah. yeah. Like, there's nothing you can do to violate the trueness of this thing. If I take all the bags off of this side, all the bags off of this side, keep in mind they're the exact same number of bags. Still true. It's always true. Like it's, I'm just putting the same amount of coins here as I am over there. So of course it's going to be true. That's why we call it an identity. It's like saying zero equals zero, or five equals five, or two equals two. That is the identity of two. Two is equal to two. Zero is equal to zero. There's nothing you can do to change that because there's no variables in here. There's nothing we can do. So sure, why zero? But why can be anything? Zero or any kid else. Okay. One, two, three. All right. So that's twenty-eight. Forty-nine. That's like a word. Oh yeah. Membership fee for joining a camping association is $45. You know what a membership fee is? Yeah. You have to pay it. Pay it one time to become a member right, of some kind of a club where you get to take advantage of some kind of a service or something like that. Uh, Sam's Club, yeah. I mean, you pay a certain amount of money to belong to the club, and then you get to, you get to come and spend more money on the stuff that they, that they sell. Anthony? Yeah, we're going to do this problem. Yeah. 49. 49. 3.449. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, so they charge you $45 to join. The local campground charges members of camping association $35 per night for camping and a non member $40 per night. After how many nights of camping is the total cost for members, including membership fee, the same as the total cost for non members? Cool. We have to write an equation here. Right? So we're going to write an equation which means something's equal, right? Something is equal. It's actually going to be a spoiler for you. Two things are going to be equal. What two things are equal in this scenario? Uh, um, oh, yeah? Oh, right. What is it they want to be? Trying to figure figure out when will this be equal? Probably uh, the members, members to non-members. No, members, members be equal to non-members. Something about members and non-members. The membership for both non-members and members. The membership fee. Yeah. There is no membership fee for non-members. That's, oh, that's, that's what, what makes them non-members. They have their age. Yeah. yeah. See how many nights it takes for both of them to get the same price. Same price. Same amount of like total. Uh, money spent. So the money spent is the same. What else is the same? The days. The days. Oh, days and the money spent. Yeah. Right? Okay, so X is the money spent. Uh, or sorry, X is the days. Sorry. X will be the days. Okay. 
Well, let's calculate how much it will take for x, you know, for x days, how much it will cost a member. Now let's just do non-member. Let's do non-member. Non-member is a little easier. How much does it cost a, a non-member to rent a campground for x days? Forty. Forty is for one day. How many days really cost? Okay, so times x. Forty times x. What does this represent? If I plug in a number of days there, what will the end number be telling me? So it would be like how many days that you stayed. No, x would be the number of days yeah. that you stayed. How much money? Oh, you're asking money. This, you're when I do forty oh, times the number of days, money. Yeah, how, much how much money you spent? Okay. Didn't we just say? In fact. Didn't we just say that the amount of money spent is going to be the same for members and non-members? Yep. This is a cost to a non-member. Let's calculate the cost to a member. 35x. 35x. It's cheaper yeah. per night. Yeah. Is there more cost to them? Their first time fee. First time fee. First time fee. And then they're done, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's cheaper per night. They have to pay more up front. But after a certain point, amount, they start, they'll start being paying less. Money. Then so, it's it, there's lots of situations like that. Oh, Would you like oh. to join this club for some number of dollars? Well, am I gonna go so there that money. many times? Is it gonna be worth my money? Yeah. Right. Well, this is the cost to a member. This is how much money the non-member is gonna spend. This is how much money the member is gonna spend. What did we just say about those two amounts? They're equal. They're equal. Right? Okay. Is this x the same as this x? Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're trying to figure out. Which number of days will give us the same cost in both scenarios? 40x equals 35x plus 45. Subtract 35x. Okay, you got 5x equals 45. Wait, would, wouldn't x be 2? Wouldn't X be two? Wait, oh, never mind, never mind, I got that wrong. Doesn't X equal nine? Let's find out. What do we do to get X by itself? Oh. Divide by five? Yes, X is nine. It, it may be a, a, a small gap for you. It may be a giant can, Grand Canyon size leap to go from saying, oh, X is nine. I just see it to divide by five on both sides. Okay. Do we get the same answer? Yes, we do. Okay. But it's the difference between being able to solve this equation someday right, and not being able to solve that equation someday. Okay. You can't guess the answer to, that, that, to the, the solutions. There's two of them to that equation. You can guess here. But until you make the habit of dividing by five on both sides, you will never get here. So, come with me. We'll get there. You just have to make a habit of, of doing this, having the mentality of the same thing on both sides, same thing on both sides. Okay, that's 49. And next is 50 something. 52. 52. $360, the Rock Climbing Gym offers a yearly membership for members, where members can climb as many times as they want and only pay $4 per day. Non-members pay $10 per day and use the gym $6 per day for the equipment oh. rental. Whoa. So they, like, so, so the members pay one time $360 and then they only have to pay for the equipment rental. Non-members have to pay just to walk in the door every time and then pay for the equipment. And they have to pay more for the equipment at that. Okay, so write an equation. Write an equation to find the number of visits after which the total cost of the member, total cost of the non-member are the same. It's exactly like what we just did, isn't it? Yeah. The scenario is a little different. 
That's exactly like what we just did. So let's talk about a non-member, right? How do we calculate for a non-member how much it will cost? Let's think of the number of days as x. Yep. Oh, I just put them together, it would be 16x total. You're right. Yeah, every time I come into the gym, I, would, I need to walk through the door, spend $10, rent equipment, $6. Every day, $10 and $6. $10 and $6. 16 bucks. So $16. I'll just do 10, 10x plus 6x stay uh, very, very strict to what the thing is saying. But then, you know, what we're going to do, we're going to combine like terms and have 16x anyway. Okay, so that's how much it costs a non-member for, for x days, for 10 days or 12 days, however many, however many days. We want that amount to be the same as the amount that the member pays. This is the math that you should do if you ever offered to join some club for some money, where you get a discount on the per video per usage charge. How about for the member? How much does it cost them? $360. That's right up front. Yeah. And then there's $40. Yeah. So $4 every time they use equipment. Right? Okay. Let's pretend like they don't. Okay, so we collect like terms on here and we have exactly what we said already. 16x equals 360 plus 4x. Subtract 4x on both sides. 12x equals 360. x divided by 12 on both sides. 30 what? 30 days, and what will happen? And that's when they break even. That's when they break even. That's a good term, they break even. Uh, that's the number of days it will take for the member and the non-member to pay the same amount. So what does that matter? Before 30 days, you should do what? If you're not going to go 30 days, you should do what? Just be a non-member. Be a non-member. If you plan on being using it for 30 days or more, be a member. Be a member. join. There you go. That's all. You have a question? Is that the thing that records your voice? No. No. Those, yeah. are, those are Bluetooth. Uh, my Bluetooth headphones. Yeah. Like your bass. Bass? Yeah. They're just little. Two little earbuds. Two 1.5s. Or two 15s. <laughs> all right, so let's pass in our homework slash. Uh, yeah. Set it right there. Right. All right, here we go. Um, as long as what the person has is mathematically true and it comes to the right answer, it's all I do. I can't go through all of the conditions here. But I'm going to collect like terms. So I'm going to get 5x minus 5 equals negative 12. I'm going to add 5 on both sides. Careful with your positives and the negatives. This should be negative 7. Divide by 5. x. It was 2x. What did I? Not 2x. Uh, 2x plus 3x. Oh, gosh. Or you could add 5 to begin with, and then you can collect the terms, whatever. There's lots of different orders to go in. Negative 7 fifths. That's the guy. Let's see. Uh, again, I'll collect like terms on this side. 3x plus 3 equals 3x minus 5. Any thoughts so far? There's a lot of threes. Minus three. Minus the number three. Yeah. Okay. Three x equals three x minus eight. Five by three x. I would divide by three x. Okay, never mind. Maybe divide by three is something yeah. I might try, but I also would. Before I do that, remember how we we talked about how you have like a number times x equals something, and you'll divide. We're all. Yes? Yeah. That? yeah. I like to save that until the very end, most of the time, like 99% of the time. That's what I'll save to the end, the actual dividing. So 
What if we subtract 3x on both sides? Get the x's together on one side, right? That's the idea. But then we get 0 equals negative 8. There's no solution. This can't possibly be true. Even if I go back to this part of the equation where there actually, like, there's an x still, there's nothing I can plug in for x that would make this work. Right? Plug in 3. 9 equals 9 minus 8? No, 9 equals 9. Not 9 minus 8. Right? Put in 5, 15 equals 15 minus 8? No, 15 is equal to 15, not 15 to minus 8. We're always subtracting 8 from the exact same thing. It can't be equal, though. So, no solution. I'm going to distribute the 2, so 6x plus 10, 6 equals uh, what I was thinking about writing there, 6x plus 4, so 10 minus 6 is 4, I'm going to uh, subtract 4x on both sides, 2x plus 4, I mean at this point, this is something like from 3.2, or 3. Four on both sides. Negative eleven. Two x equals negative eleven. X equals negative eleven over two. All right, double double duty here, distributing twice. Sixteen x minus thirty two plus 2 equals 3x minus 15. Writing equations, formulas. Okay, let's start off real, real slow. First, we'll start off talking about what does it mean to find the solution to an equation. Another one, another way to think about finding the solution of solving for x is one that's a little more helpful in, in this section of the book. Uh, get x alone. Or same thing, isolate x. Or get x by itself, or whatever. Get x, or whatever it is you're trying to solve for, by itself 
on one side of the equation. So we've been throwing a lot of curveballs. Curveball, yeah. Okay. Between section 3.1 and 3.4, all these different things that we might deal with trying to solve an equation, trying to get this by itself. Yeah. Oh, what is that? One thing after I isolate. X. Should no, be four. No. Oh, yeah. oh four. It's a, just the word or. Oh. We're going to get x by itself. This applies even if, when we get done, and x is by itself, the other side of the equation also has variables in it. Still applies. Let's start off with an easy one. We do the same thing. We just want to make sure we do the same thing to both sides. So let's say 2x plus d equals Good problem. Get x by itself. If it helps, just pretend that d is four. 7 or 4 or just some number, right? Just pretend it is some number. Let's see what you got. Get x by itself. Same philosophy, same idea, same quote steps that we would take. It's just that when we move around all the stuff, some of that stuff is d instead of a number. But if d was a number, what would you do with it? That's what you would do with a number, that's what you would do with D. Anthony? Can you come like see if it's right? Sure. If this was 2x plus 3 equals 4, what would we do first? Subtract 3. You subtract 3. It is no different in this case. What would you do first? Minus d. Subtract whatever d is. Well, what's 4 minus d? I don't know. I don't know what d is. So I just tell you like, the instructions for finding that side. If, d, if you knew what d was, you would subtract it from 4. But there's nothing else I can do until I know what D is, so I just have to leave it looking like this. Right. Okay, well we subtracted 3 on both sides, or D on both sides, what do we do uh, at this point to get X by itself? Divide by 2. Divide by 2, divide by 2. Same thing here, divide this side by 2, divide this side by 2. trying to do is exactly what makes this kitten weep. Yeah. You're trying to cancel out this guy with this guy just because they look the same and then it doesn't affect anything else. <laughs> look, let's go over here. Let me show you what I mean by this. Okay? Let's not write 1 over 2. Let's just leave it as 4 minus 3. Just like this is 4 minus D. Divide this by 2. Can I just take 4 divided by 2? Do 2 minus 3? No. No. Just 
boom, boom. That's the exact same thing that's happening here, by mistake. That's the exact same thing you're trying to do here by canceling this 4 with this 2. What about the D? Can you divide the D by 2? No. Well, I guess you could, but you'd have to show that. Ooh, I know, dude, it's a little bit tough. Okay, I don't want to do that. I don't want to mess with all that. Let's go back. Right. Here, I have 1 over 2. Here, I just have whatever 4 minus d is. Once I have that number, I can divide it by 2. But until I know what d is, I can't really, I can't cancel these 4 minus 2. So, what do we like to do first? Ooh. Anthony? What do you do plus Q on both sides? What's negative Q plus Q? They cancel each other out. They cancel each other out. What's 5 plus Q? 5 Q. 5 Q. 5 plus Q. Is 5 plus Q the same as 5 Q? No, because no. 5, no. 5 plus Q is 5 times Q. 5 plus Q. Or five Q is five. Five Q is five times. Is five plus Q the same as five times Q? No. No, no, no. no it's a really common mistake. No, five plus Q is five plus Q. Five Q is five times Q. This is not multiplication. So it's still just five plus Q. Uh, divided by three. X plus equals X. five plus Q over. Three. That's a two-step equation. Right? Just with a Q instead of a number. H acts just like any other number would, because H is a number. We just don't know which. Number. So what first? Plus H on both sides. Plus H. Do you have to plus H on both sides first? Yeah. No. 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 So do this first, right? Whatever that is that I'm implying. Distributive property. Distributive property. I don't know. I put an extra syllable, syllable there. That word. Now. Subtract 6. Oh, there's a number over here. I can subtract that. Subtract 6 from that. 3x equals negative 2 plus h. And divide by 3. three. Divide by 3. That's just everything that's over here divided by 3. I think I got it. Yeah, I got that. One more. 2x plus 5y equals 12. Let's solve for y this time, just so you see it. We could, we could have solved for h if we wanted to. In this case, we'll solve for y. All right, if we're solving for y, we're doing y by itself. We would follow all the same rules. We treat 2x just like any other number we would manipulate. Aiden? Okay, so you would do divide by 2x, right? Divide by 2x. Would it be minus 2x? Okay, we would say subtract 2x. Oh, my bad. 2x minus 2x is 0, so we have 5y equals 12 minus 2x, and then just divide by 5, y equals 12 minus 2x over 5, hold on now, I'm going to write this as y equals negative 2x plus 12, right, that's the same, I'm going to divide everything by 5, negative 2 fifths x plus 12 over 5, does this look familiar, yeah, y equals mx plus b, 
Okay. Standard form, two slow things. Uh, have a good weekend.